and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about why your intentions for others are like a boomerang. The intentions you give out is exactly what you receive in return. The truth is, when we have bad intentions or don't wish others well, that same negative energy is sent back to you. The same way you throw a boomerang and it returns back to us after we throw it is the same way our intentions work. What if I told you that by wishing others well and having good intentions, that we are actually summoning that same energy back to us? This is why it is essential to always wish others well and be happy for the success of others. The harsh reality is that the people who are quote unquote haters only attract negativity because their ill intentions are constantly returning back to them. Wishing people well and celebrating their success is the best and fastest way to attract that same success back to you. Based on the law of attraction, like attracts like. So the more positive intentions you give to others, the more positive energy that will return to you. As Robin Sharma quotes, to get all that life wants for you, apply what I call the boomerang effect. Give out what you most want to see come back. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. You had some major big roles. I mean, one of your breakout roles was um, on True Blood on HBO. So let's talk about that experience. You play a vampire, correct? Yeah, I do. I, I actually <laughs> play the oldest vampire. He's like supposed to be like thousands of years old, but he's stuck in a nine-year-old's body. Like he was wow. bit at the time. So that was really cool because mm -hmm. as a kid, all you want to do is be in charge of everything, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I was doing. It's like, wow, this is awesome. Not <laughs> only that, I'm a vampire and <laughs> I love monsters and stuff. I love creatures of the night, like all that kind of stuff. And uh, that was a dream come true. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have American actor Jacob Hopkins. Jacob is best known for his lead roles as Alexander Drew in the HBO series True Blood, Chad Kemp in The Goldbergs, and currently as the voiceover actor in the anime series To Your Eternity. Jacob, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing it very, very well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I'm so excited to finally have you on the show today. I've been talking to your publicist for a while about this, so I'm so glad we can finally make it happen. So thank you <laughs> for being here. Bye. So, you know, talk to us about when did you develop a love for acting? When did you think, okay, acting is what I want to do long term? Yeah, I, that was, uh, believe it or not, when I was five years old. Wow. I mean, you're uh, my dad was actually an actor before me. He played A.G. Quartermain in General Hospital in the 90s. Oh, wow. And yeah, and, and one fateful day, right? I'm like four or five, uh, and we're running errands together. And we stopped by his agents, and, you know, I'm just there, right? I'm just a kid. But they look over at me, and they're like, is this your son? Is he interested in acting? Would he like to get into acting? And, and me being me, I just, like, shoot out of my seat, and I'm like, yeah! <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I didn't really have like a concept of it. To me at that age, it was just kind of like, oh, I'm pretending to be like other people. <laughs> so that's just what kids kind of do on a regular basis. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And then I, I fell in love with the creativity and, you know, the, the passion that comes along with it at such a young age. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a love ever since. Yeah, amazing. I mean, that is very young, five, <laughs> to be like, okay, I'm going to be an actor. That's it. We're going to make this yeah. happen. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first major audition that you remember? And what was running through your head? Oh, man. So, like, the, the, the first, like, breakout that I got was when I was nine. And um, I booked Alexander Drew on True Blood. Um, but, like, the, the, the first thing that I ever got in that really sticks in my head because of what happened prior to it. Um, I was five when I booked this Kmart commercial with Jacqueline oh. Smith, who I didn't know what, who I didn't know who Jacqueline Smith was at that time. My mom was like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> but I was in kindergarten and the day before I went to do the commercial, I was like, you know what? This would be really cool. I just got this really cool idea. I'm just going to cut my own hair. 
uh, oh, no. during class, no less. And of course, it looked terrible. There's nothing <laughs> human at all about it. And I remember my mom. <laughs> I remember I tried to hide it by like putting all the hair that I cut off back on top of my head. My mom picks me up and I'm like, hey. <laughs> and she oh my runs gosh. Hand through my head and pulls out this like blob of hair. She's like, what did you do? Wow. So you can find this commercial on YouTube. Just look up like Jacob Hopkins Kmart commercial. My hair. She had to <laughs> make it work. It's so short. Like the bangs are like way up wow. here. Look back at all like it is now. But that was super <laughs> fun. And uh, I'll never forget that. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know what, I had a similar experience in grade five where I decided to cut my bangs and I was like, oh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to grow back. And yeah, I, I, I got made fun yeah. of for a while. <laughs> Just keep it that way. I, I, <laughs> there was like a bald spot on one side. So yeah, I didn't have to do a commercial the next day <laughs> like you did. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you still you still probably killed it. I mean, you still got the commercial. So that's incredible. I I did. Go and look it up and uh, let me know what you think. <laughs> That's so funny. And you know what? You had some major big roles. I mean, one of your breakout roles was um, on True Blood on HBO. So let's talk about that experience. You play a vampire, correct? Yeah, I do. I, I actually <laughs> play the oldest vampire. He's like supposed to be like thousands of years old, but he's stuck in a nine year old's body. Like he was wow. bit at a child. So that was really cool because mm -hmm. as a kid, all you want to do is be in charge of everything, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I was doing. It's like, wow, this is awesome. Not only that, <laughs> I'm a vampire and I love monsters and stuff. I love creatures of the night, like all that kind of stuff. And uh, that was a dream come true. Um, everyone was such a blast to work with. I'm actually still really good friends with Carolyn Hennessy to this day. She played opposite of me. She was another vampire on the Vampire Authority. Uh, wow. is what we were. And, um, and yeah, it, it was just a blast. All the special effects were super duper cool. I got to be on a harness in one scene where I get staked. I get wow. like lift up this for Maloney and psh, I explode all these guts. Wow. And, okay, this like, he's not gonna get traumatized, right? And I'm just on set like, whoa, fangs, blood, yes. <laughs> wow. I would have fainted. I, I don't like blood. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever... Trust me. It's, it's, it's a fake blood thing. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess it was okay for you. What was your most memorable milestone to date so far? Oh, man. It's got to be the Amazing of Gumball. That was um, my first voiceover audition and uh, gig that I booked for voiceover. Um, I started doing voiceover when I was 11, so I had been doing on-camera acting for a while at that point. Um, so I, I got the acting experience under my belt, but voiceover is just a completely different art form. Um, you really have to perfect how clearly you speak. Uh, there's no camera to pick up on your body language at all, so all your emotion has to go through your voice. And I remember training for that for like months. Um, specifically training for the role of Gumball Watterson. I remember it was like a couple months after I auditioned, just two months of consecutive going back and forth with callbacks, training me for the role. Because at that point they're like, oh, this kid's gonna be him. Like, we, we know it's gonna be this guy. We just gotta get him ready. Cause mm -hmm. I had never done voiceover before. And this character had already been established for a couple years prior. Mm -hmm. um, and I was blessed with doing Gumball for I'm gonna say four years of my life. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll never forget it. it I, I learned everything I know about voiceover from that job. Uh, I made so many amazing friends along the way, like Terrell Ransom Jr., who played Darwin Watterson. Uh, we're still really great friends to this day, and it'll always it'll always be a part of me. You know, it's mm -hmm. one of those things. Yeah. And what do you prefer? Do you prefer being in front of the camera or doing voiceovers? I know for voiceovers, as you said, it's a little bit different because people aren't distracted by how you look and your voice is really the main thing. So which one do you prefer? I, I can't really choose because they're they're so not not completely opposite, but they're real. They're both really fun to do. I really like being on camera and playing off of other people. Um, but I also really like voiceover because it, it's kind of liberating to just step out of yourself and become something 
especially like Gumball, that's not human mm -hmm. at all. Like you <laughs> never comprehend that in real life, but you can through cartoons. Um, and I really like that idea. I really like, you know, just becoming a completely different character, totally changing your voice. I think that's super cool. Mm -hmm. From vampires to <laughs> gumball, <laughs> I mean, clearly <laughs> you enjoy different diverse roles, which which is amazing. <laughs> you know, I, I know your current role is To Your Eternity. Um, it's an anime um, series. So talk to us a little bit about your character. Yeah, so to, to kind of quote uh, the Beholder, who is the narrator of the show, um, in the beginning, there was an orb, and the orb was cast onto the earth. And at first, it came into contact with a rock and became that rock. And then came into contact with moss and became that moss. And then it came into contact with a dying wolf and became that wolf. And then it met a boy, a nameless boy. And we get to see the journey of this orb who is named Fushi, who I voice, wow. um, and also the boy, <laughs> who uh, learns how to become human. And I don't want to give too much away because there's, if you haven't seen it, it's it's been out for, I want to say eight weeks now, but if you haven't seen it, there's so much that happens in the very first episode that's super, super critical to the continuation of the entire series. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to give too much away, but um, To Your Eternity is a very beautiful show. It's a very deep show about what it really means to be human. And if you've ever lost your humanity, what it means to regain that humanity. Okay. And I've never had the chance to play something so grounded and deep. And I'm really excited to be doing that. And I'm really excited for more and more episodes to come out. We got 20 uh, episodes lined up this year. Um, there's going to be more next year. That's all I know of now. Mm -hmm. We're on episode eight. Uh, you can stream it on Crunchyroll and HBO Max. And it's an amazing show. I really hope you guys check it out. Amazing. And, and how do you get into character for these roles? Since you play so many diverse roles, how do you get into character? Yeah, that, that's a question I get asked a lot. <laughs> um, for voiceover, it's, it's easier for me if I see what the character looks like, because um, you can gain, you, you can glimpse a lot of what their personality is based off of that. Um, but whenever you get like a character description, that's always really nice. Um, but if you don't get those, reading the sides or the scenes, you can uh, kind of glimpse, uh, you know, their attitude, how they speak, what their personality is, and just really go from there. I've always thought that acting is a study of people, and it's really important to, you know, going through your everyday life, studying different kinds of people, you know, their personalities, their thoughts, the way they speak, their body language. There's an endless, you know, barrel of different people out there that you can study and learn how they act and then use that experience to create different characters and sort of either step out of yourself or if the character is similar to you, then just play yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've had quite a lot of success at a young age, you know, from um, from True Blood to the Goldbergs. So what do you think has kind of separated you from other people in this industry? Well, I, I wouldn't really know how to answer how to separate myself from other people. I mean, really, it, it is very important in this industry to just stay true to yourself. Um, like, you know, like any uh, job or career, it's, it's, it's a little tempting to kind of slip out of yourself um, into the bad stuff. But, uh, you know, if you keep your head on your shoulders, if you stay true to yourself, um, you'll be fine and, and keep persevering. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always like to talk about, you know, the path to success, not just like, you know, we, we see people that are successful, but it's always interesting to learn, you know, how they got there. You know, what advice would you have for someone who wants to become an actor um, and, you know, maybe it's scared to take that leap or is not seeing the success or getting those no's in auditions because we all know auditions can be very difficult. You don't get all of them. So what advice would you have to encourage our viewers to keep going? No, yeah, you're right. There is definitely a lot of rejection in this business. Unfortunately, you know, acting is a form of art and art is very subjective. You know, one person in the casting office would probably love you, but then the creator of these series would be like, nah, this ain't the guy. Um, so there, there is that, but I would say to really 
persevere. Just really keep your perseverance. Keep auditioning. Keep going out. You're gonna get something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because if if you keep auditioning, if you, if you keep putting yourself out there, if you if you stay confident, stay true to yourself, and really believe in your own capabilities, your name is going to be known in casting. They're gonna know who you are. They're gonna see that you keep auditioning. You're you, you know you keep staying out there. Um, and you're really going to show what you can do. Um, and really, now that I'm saying this out loud, it's just its just really never give up on your dreams. Um, mm -hmm. I've been working for like, I want to say 13 years in this industry. That's crazy. <laughs> and out of those 13 years, there are hundreds and hundreds of auditions that I've gone in for and haven't booked. And I... Out of those 13 years, there's like three or four big roles that I've gotten. Mm. Out of 13 years, only three or four. But that's okay. That you know, you, you just you still got it. You got to keep going after it. You got to keep chasing it. Mm -hmm. I think that's great advice, and it's so important for people to hear because you know I'm sure there are people out there that go to two or three auditions, they get a no, and they're like, okay, that's it. <laughs> I'm done with this industry. It's not for me. But it's it's good to hear, you know, someone like you who's so successful and has all the success and and you know had the rejection in the industry in the beginning. And as you said, you've been doing this for 13 years, so that's that's amazing. What else are you currently working on? Well, right now, uh, I'm still working on more episodes of To Your Eternity. Um, just actually yesterday, uh, I finished recording episodes 11 and 12. Nice. So, tune for that. More episodes uh, every Monday. Um, I can't sit. There is another uh, animated series that I'm working on. I'm one of the leads, and I can't say what it is right now, but very soon I'm thinking I can announce it. So, stay tuned for that. I will definitely be announcing on my Instagram and Twitter. My Instagram is Hopkins Jake and my Twitter is Hopkins Jacob Five. So stay tuned. Yeah. Yes, okay, we're excited for it. Thank you so much, Jacob, for being on the show today. It's been a pleasure and we hope to have you back when you're gonna announce your next project because it sounds <laughs> exciting. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.